Change me, I relive my past dreams And past times right next to you I need to let it go I think you gotta know that I tried But we tried, honey We know, I think we gotta know It was measurable and we all Good morning guys, welcome back to Vaga Brothers It's day five of our road trip through Northern Ireland And right now, we're in Belfast it's a beautiful day here in the capital of Northern Ireland. We have a fun day ahead of us and we're starting off with breakfast. It is a beautiful morning here in Belfast. The city is gorgeous. It's got that beautiful Victorian architecture I've seen in Liverpool or Glasgow. City Hall right behind us is an exact replica in Durban, South Africa. So it's kind of from that, that time period. All these cities were trading with each other. And you can kind of see those influences in the buildings around us. It's cool. All right guys, well we've just got to St. George's Market and I'm excited because I've walked in here and the whole building, the top of it is just filled with like smoke of bacon and sausages. We are in St. George's Market, so this is kind of the food and drink hub of Belfast. And uh, this is where I would come on a Sunday morning and buy some stuff to make for dinner and also get a really good breakfast. Oh wow. So what do we have here? Okay, so this is our traditional Ulster fry. We have our soda bread and potato bread. We have our pork and dulled sausages, smoked bacon, vegetable roll, black pudding, and tomato. That was an award-winning fry for a reason. All the ingredients come from here in the market. So we're gonna go check out some of the stands here that provide uh, this restaurant, along with many others, with the ingredients they need to make good food. These guys have been blending tea here for about 11 years in total now. And they started off selling here in the market. Um, they sold 118 pounds in their first day. And last year, a, a cup of Suki tea was being drunk every second of every minute of every day. So it's, they're doing really well. This is SD Bells. They are Ireland's oldest coffee roaster. Um, they've been roasting coffee since uh, 1887, the year before Belfast became a city. Guys, small world, Michael here, who is the bearded candle maker, actually saw our last series from Ireland and follows us on Facebook. Small world. Very small world, yeah. Well, really? thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, appreciate course, it. Yeah. My girlfriend's going to love these candles. So just a bit of background on the history of street art here in Belfast. As we talked about in the earlier episode, from the 60s onwards, all of Northern Ireland was divided by the political conflict between Protestants and Catholics known as the Troubles. Here in the city, different ethnic neighborhoods were literally divided by walls. It was there that the first murals appeared um, about 50 years ago. My name is Tim McCarthy. I'm a street artist painting under the name of Vers. We have a reputation for wall-based art and murals, but unfortunately for us it's been all the wrong kind. And these murals have been very tribal, um, based on paramilitary images, and they're designed to intimidate. So that is their way of very visually and very simply saying, you're not welcome in this area. So what we've done as artists over the last few years is play on this tradition of murals, but try and create something slightly more positive. So a lot of the stuff we do would be environmental, there would be humour in it, or we're just trying to make very run down areas look a lot more beautiful with, with our art. The tour starts here at the Duke of York, which is a legendary pub, apparently has a great whiskey selection, but this is basically the courtyard right here. So we're walking around the cathedral quarter right now, we'll show you some of the best pieces from the walls, along with a little bit of context. Well guys,
because this piece of artwork here is done by an artist called MTO and it's called Son of Protagoras. In the subject's hands you have a dove, which is a symbol of peace. It's got two arrows through it. On the fletchings of the arrow has the Catholic cross and the other has a Protestant cross. So The idea being that like they would have had peace here in Northern Ireland if it had not been for the religious divides. So we're walking past all these big brick buildings which kind of speak of the city's past, but apparently this is the LGBT quarter. Um, apparently not that long ago, even 10 years ago, it wasn't very tolerant in that regard, but I think from our guide's perspective, a lot of things have changed. I think it's part of the city's progress. It's all over us, like it always was. Just got to the Titanic Belfast. Voted this week as the number one tourist experience in Europe. I have to say that was one of the best museum experiences I have ever had. Immersive, engaging, eye-opening, an in-depth breakdown of the ship, you know, tales of survivors. It was intense, it was eye-opening, and I really enjoyed it. The exhibition ended it with talking about the future of Belfast, how this quarter, the Titanic quarter, is one of the largest urban seafront regeneration projects in the world. And right around the corner are the Titanic Studios, which helped produce Game of Thrones. From what we've seen so far, it seems like the city's gone through numerous transformations, industrially, culturally, politically, and is moving very far forward. So, future looks bright. I think there's a cocktail in our future. Let's go. I cook the mic, burn the beat into a third degree I penetrate through yours, you ain't hurting me Illusions through your eyes, black skies like mercury It's gonna take a pound My name's Stephen Thoman, uh, head chef and owner at Ox Restaurant the Belfast food scene's amazing at the minute It's very positive, um, super exciting All the young guys are coming back from traveling And they've got loads of ideas, new products, new techniques Well, our tagline's uh, seasonal creativity and. Our menus are based around what's in season. It's a blind tasting menu, you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, we're working two years when we got the star. I mean, we're always working towards Michelin. It's a, it's a standard that you know all chefs look up to. And it was our dream to get it. And we, when we achieved it, it was just a day we'll never forget. Lovely way to wrap up today, honestly. Beautiful meal, great ambiance, great wine pairing, and just generally good vibes. Alex and I have been lucky enough to eat at a number of Michelin starred restaurants in the last year. This one was very distinct, a very accessible price point, 50 pounds for a five course tasting menu. And five courses, by the way, is the perfect size for such a tasting menu. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, you know exactly what to do. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Wagon Brothers if you have not already. In the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. More specifically, on the King's Road, because winter is coming.